Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to episode 33 of the Tim Tebow Dynasty. I'm leading the league in MVP race, and this is a Denard Robinson game. So this is a highlight clip from his actual Jaguars career. We previously beat the Colts week 6 of the season, a 34-22 victory. I threw for 354 yards, 3 touchdowns, and 2 interceptions. I also ran for another 50 yards. In that game, our offense lines had a pretty good game. Gave up zero sacks, but I want to limit those turnovers. So that's my goal. We'll see how it goes. Coming into the game, we have the top-rated offense in the league. We are second in pass yards, fifth in rush yards, and leading the league in 36.6 points per game. The Colts defense, on the other hand, is the second worst. They are pretty good against the pass, but they are the worst defensive team against the rush this year and they're giving up 29 points per game so we should have a pretty good game this Colts defense does have its good players their linebacking core is pretty good uh, with Aaron Curry who had a pretty good game against us last time uh, he's rated at a 78 their rookie linebacker Aaron Croker is an 86, and they have Robert Mathis at right outside linebacker. They also have corner Vontae Davis, free safety and Tony Bethea, and strong safety Leron Landry. So that could give me problems today. After Denard Robinson's monster 55-yard run, I'm trying to get him that his first rushing touchdown of his career. And that time they just got a short game. The Jaguars are at the line of scrimmage with a spread formation. Midway through the first. Getting into the end zone for the touchdown. Coming into the game, you're going to see me trying to force the ball to rookie Zach Meow because he's only 17 catches away from breaking Anquan Bolden's rookie single season record. We got this game and we got one more against the Texans for him to get that record. So I'm going to be forcing the ball to Zach Meow. Coming into this game, I'm only five passing touchdowns away from breaking Peyton Manning's 2013 record of 55 passing touchdowns in a season. They've got a first down now after that catch. Running away from the pressure. And Aaron Curry does what they couldn't do at all week six, and they get their first sack of the game. The offense can do. They were ready for that play, and they stopped it. The Jaguars with an empty backfield look here. Escaping the pressure, and that's a gain of 10. And I've officially have back-to-back 1,000 yards rushing in a season. With five wide outs and no one in the backfield. He's got the grab, and he's got the first. While well, Zach Mia did pick up the first down, uh, I should have gone to Mercedes Lewis right there because he was open and probably had nobody guarding him, it looked like. So it probably would have get, get, got us more yards, but I want to get those catches for Zach Meow. Lewis moved from the tight end position to the slot. And that's a gain of nine. Now back during our week six victory over the Colts, Maurice Jones drew, ran the ball 17 times for 155 yards. Unfortunately, he is out this game as he is hurt for the rest of the season. So now we're going to have to rely on Justin Forsett and Denard Robinson to have good games on the ground if we hope to do the same thing. Second down after going to the ground game, the first play. And that'll be a 
a gain of about two. I would say Justin Forsett is our backup running back because he can't see the hole very well when he has a clear running lane. But Maurice Jones Drew does the same crap, so I guess it's a Madden glitch, but it happens a lot with our running backs. And with that injury, Justin Forsett is now out for the rest of this game in another four weeks. So we're going to miss him next week and possibly our first playoff game. So we're down to one running back and a fullback. Play after play after play here on this drive. Second attempt. Robinson's going to secure the On this play, if Denard Robinson keeps running to the left corner of the end zone, he would have made it. Instead, he runs it back to the middle and gets tackled. Down in bad field position. Look at him now. Inside the red zone. Let's see if they can pay it off. Tebow's got it in the gun. Getting sacked. Our offensive line is already off to a bad start. That's the second sack of the game. Mounting a serious drive. Tebow standing back in the shotgun ready for the snap. Dances it out to about the nine. If you can tell by the highlight at the beginning of the game and me calling this is a Denard Robinson game, he's about to go off. The Colts come out in the nickel. Tebow's going to take it from the gun. Touchdown, Jacksonville. <laughs> Apparently on the sideline, Zach Miao is giving Dana Robinson some touchdown celebration tips because he brings out the old guitar and sledgehammer. Robert Mathis reads it perfectly, and our left tackle stops blocking him, so he breaks it up for a negative four yards. Tate's lined up now as a slot receiver. Tim Tebow down the field. And Laurent Landry comes in and makes a play. Looking for Justin Blackman deep. And Laurent Landry picks it off perp perfectly. So now I get to call five run plays. Making the stop on that play with middle linebacker Aaron Croker, who's an 86 overall was the number seven pick in the third round of the 2014 draft in Madden, which brought to my attention that there was a lot of good picks in that third round. I've mentioned multiple times good quarterbacks taken in that third round, and apparently one of the best players in the draft was an 86 overall linebacker who fell somehow to the third round. I'm going to try going for it on fourth down. So far, Denard Robinson is averaging 11 yards per carry, so a fourth and one shouldn't be a problem picking up. Denard Robinson comes through and picks up a good nine yards for us. Well, a short gain on the run that time by the offense. When you're running football team, listen, there's going to be a lot of ugly plays that don't work. In week six, Aaron Curry had eight tackles and two sacks. So far, he already has about one sack, if I remember correct, and now five tackles. So he's already a problem for us this game, too. And my offensive line gives up yet another sack. Coming into the game, this offensive line was the second worst in the league, having given up 80 sacks. The only team worse than us was the Patriots. The Patriots' offensive line was so bad that Ryan Mallett, their starting quarterback, was sacked 72 times before going down with the injury. Now they have their rookie second-round pick, Louis Serra, in... And he's already been sacked 15 times. So they've given up about seven more sacks than us before this game. That right there is a pretty good run for 24 yards. 
Hoping for a couple more blocks and I could have ran it in the end zone. Didn't get those blocks though. Here's the first snap after the big play. Just had to avoid the sack. Incomplete. Marching down the field and taking their time. Rocks him with that hit, and the ball's going to fall incomplete. So far in this first half, our offensive line has been struggling, and our receivers have been dropping a lot of passes. That's why it's incomplete. The big hit by the defender. The long drive continues. Going to be a tackle for a loss. Try to catch the defense off of guard there with a halfback draw. And they read it perfectly and uh, got tackled them for a loss for minus four yards. So. We get the ball back with 23 seconds on the clock and all three timeouts. So let's try to at least get into field goal range before half. Those underneath throws help with Zach Mia's receptions that he needs. But it really didn't get us in yards. So it's kind of stupid for me to go there. Either the fourth or fifth sack of the half. Not great. Our offensive line is not having a good game. Not picking up the blitz at all. You can see that. I can see that. I don't know if they could see that because they're, I guess, playing blind. All right, so we're at the 49-yard line. Let's try picking up a couple more yards, kick a field goal, and go into the half. Golden Tate makes the catch, but he can't come down in bounds. So, I guess I'm just having to chuck it to the end zone. Trying to catch Justin Blackman deep. And Vontae Davis read that ball perfectly. Coming down with the interception to finish the first half. All right, this episode has no sponsor, but a recent survey has found that if you take a cold shower, you are psychotic. You might want to go get checked out, out by a doctor. I take warm showers. I'm a normal person who's going to go eat a nice Korean sandwich. Starting off the second half, 17 to 9. The key is to cut down on those two turnovers I had in the first half. And keep feeding Denard Robinson the rock. He's clearly winning the game for us. So let's just keep getting him involved in the game. And Denard Robinson has officially doubled his season total for rushing yards. He came into the game with about 80-something. He's now at 89. So he has doubled his rushing yards for the season already. Pretty good game. And after we punt, our defense forced a turnover and got us the ball at the 9-yard line. Hopefully we can capitalize here and get a touchdown. Now, I don't know how he did it, but apparently he could jump through guys and get the interception. So, my third pick of the day. You tell me in the comments, was that... Bad play by me, or did the game glitch right there and clearly force that interception because there's no way he could jump right through him like he did. And the problem with only having one healthy running back right now is that I can't really call five straight running plays after every interception because then I'm going to get him hurt as well. So, kind of at a dilemma because our team apparently is not re signing any free agent running backs or putting these guys on injured reserve because they are out for the rest of the season so going into the last game after this we only have denard robinson at running back my running back gets a block for me and i pick up 26 yards on the ground and if we're being honest this is probably the worst game my offensive lines had this season 
and my worst game at quarterback this season. The Colts, I guess, have figured out my offense because they're playing us perfectly. They're shutting down our passing game pretty nicely. I only have about 112 yards so far. So hopefully I can figure it out the rest of the game and we could walk out of here with a win. Justin Blackman picks up a 36-yard reception and gets hurt. So this wasn't what was supposed to happen today. We're supposed to just walk out of here with a nice win, have one more game, and then go to the playoffs. Now everybody's getting hurt. So probably going to be a disappointing playoffs run for us. If Robinson would have cut up right there instead of keep going to the outside again, he probably would have had a touchdown. I don't know what's happening. The Colts came into the game as a bottom five team in the league in terms of total sacks. They finished the game with nine. So get ready for a couple more. What would have set us up for a fourth and five and probably a nice touchdown. Mercedes Lewis proceeds to drop the ball. His second or third drop of the day. We're not having a good game overall as a whole team. Guys, I just spoke with a Jaguars official. The injury appears to be minor. So the just looking him over one last time and then he'll get back on the field. That's just a bad... Those are going to be our last points of the whole game. Prepare for what's probably going to be hard to watch because we probably should lose this game if the Colts had a better offense. And now I'm playing like I'm going to get hit because my right tackle keeps getting beat. So, if you thought Patrick Mahomes played bad in the Super Bowl, prepare for something even worse. Heading into the fourth quarter with an 11-point lead. There's not really much I can say because we're having a bad game. The whole team, besides our defense, is having a pretty bad game. And if Denard Robinson wasn't playing today, we probably would have lost. Or we might still lose. But either way, Denard Robinson's the only one keeping us in the game on offense. He's been pretty consistent. With both rushing and receiving, so. Mercedes Lewis has actually caught it this time for three yards. So, I'm over this game. This team's a disappointment. Luckily, we should have home field advantage for the playoffs and a first wild card bye. So hopefully that helps, but there's not very many positive things to say about this game besides besides Jernard Robinson and our defense. Even right there, Zach Meow made the catch, but we didn't pick up the first down. So we turned the ball over. I don't understand how the Colts with the multiple opportunities we've given them have only put up nine points with Andrew Luck as their quarterback. It's like every time we take a step forward, our offensive line gives up a sack and we take two steps back. So now it's third and ten again. You cannot play quarterback in the NFL anymore if you don't have good footwork. And that means in the, in I probably should be punting it right here instead of going for it on fourth and ten, especially with the way our offensive line has been playing. But let's risk it. Golden Tate gets the second catch of the game in a big moment that was much needed. The 
Typically across 200 yards by around the midpoint of the second quarter. It's now the fourth quarter, almost done, and I just hit 200 yards for the game. Not a very good game for us. With that catch, A. Sanders improves his pretty pathetic stats for the season. He has now three catches on the day for 70 yards. Play number six coming up on this drive. In trouble now, eyeing that left side. And he's brought down by Antoine Buffet. The Colts come out in a dime package. These long drives are nice because they eat up a good chunk of the clock, but we're not putting up any points. So that's frustrating because we scored 17 in the first half. How are we only putting three in the second half? Especially since we came into the game averaging 36.6 points per game. With that catch, Zach Meow now has 95 receptions for the season. He's only seven receptions away from breaking Anquan Bolden's rookie receiving catches record. Hopefully he get all seven in the next game, our final of the season. A score here would put the game out of reach, but never know. They'll take the snap from inside the red zone. A week ago, they had a lot of success inside the 20. A tackle that had to be made. That'll set up fourth down. How about the defensive line? I should probably kick the field goal here, but I'm going to go for it. And get it done, get in the backfield and make an attack. Tebow's back in shotgun formation. Change of possession coming up as they fail to... Four offensive line that like eight guys threw. So I had no time to throw. And I got hit immediately. And we did not pick up the fourth down. Trying to work that left side. The Colts are going to burn the first of their three timeouts right here. And we're back into field goal range. I don't like kicking field goals, so whatever. But we're up by five with less than 50 seconds left. And they have only two more timeouts now. That picks up seven. And they're going to call a timeout here to stop the clock. Down at the 13-yard line, you'd expect us to score. Takes in the slot. Tebow standing back in the shotgun, ready for the snap, and the quarterback is taken down. And again, nobody picks up the blitz, so another sack. Many of defensive backs out on the field for this one. Secures it with two hands. A. Sanders picks up the first down, and they jump off sides anyways, so hopefully we can score. What looks like the defender was caught in the neutral zone, Phil. Yeah, he was. Good job by the quarterback. You know, he made that little voice inflection. That'll get him every time. Quarterback's a little sneaky, you know. They come to the line, and it's first down. Tebow's going to take it from the gun. Inhales the pass. Denard Robinson has seven catches for the day. The One touchdown. The first of their three timeouts right here. And now I'm going to use my timeouts because I want to add another touchdown to make it look like we blow them out. Yeah, you know, sometimes teams like to score late to make the games look close. I like to score late to make it look like we blow people out. So it's the same thing. Golden Tate does the same exact play as earlier, where he catches the ball on the sideline, but can't keep his feet in bounds, so we lose a touchdown there. And the interception ends the game. Happy to walk away. This is a frustrating game overall. Alright folks, the only reason we were able to pull off the win is because Denard Robinson had a pretty good game for us. He was pretty solid on the ground with over 100 yards rushing. And he had multiple catches through the air. So, this is a Denard Robinson game. 
To end things, we're going to show a clip of Denard Robinson's real-life career. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And come back for our final game of the season before the playoffs.